Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here. Um, July 1939, Japan turn. Uh, $27, I think, Japan had. So two bucks for a tech roll, eight bucks for a militia, five bucks for an SNLF Marine, and now that Japan can buy mechs, 12 bucks for three mechs. So last turn, Japan really wants to spend everything on China. So they're going to go all in. Let's do Japan's tech roll here. It's two bucks. Japan really wants wartime economy. So seven or higher to get that one started. Oh, nope. Okay. I've put together a little plan here that I'm calling Operation Red Sunset. So this is a double move by Japan, one against Communist China here in their main territory where they have eight, no less than eight units defending. The other is on the other end down here against this Chinese Communist territory with three KMT infantry and an artillery defending. And uh, just by the math, this one, they're both gonna be close. Um, only because on this one we're only taking naval power in as support for infantry. Up here we're taking all seven airplanes, four fighters and three tacticals into here. Supported by, I think, four ground units. So this one is more primarily about attrition. If we take it, terrific. If not, these planes should get at least two turns of whittling down these units, down from eight down to something like one to three is what our goal would be. Um, I've got a militia to build here, and I've got a militia to build here as well in case they want to get crazy. But if we take that, then we're next to Yunnan again, and we might force the KMT in the mountains here in these two territories to fall back. So calling this Red Sunset, because both these are controlled by the communists, and if I take both of them, the Chinese communists would be down to only one IPP of income. So let me show you how this is going to work. Um, first of all, I'm going to move all of these Chinese communist units to the battle board and then show you what I'm going to move in after I do that. Okay, here we go. So, by the way, see this guy in this mountain, Japanese mountain infantry right here? He's a guard. I forgot to roll for the Japanese guards last turn. So I think I lost two land units in this attack, and so I rolled 112 on two of the dice. So he's going to come in. This other mountain infantry is going to come in. This anti-aircraft is going to come in. I'm pretty sure I can do that, even though there's no planes here. And then this infantry right here is going to come in as well. This marine is not. He's going to go down and uh, hit the beach in the south. So I'm only taking four units in. Something of a risk. Um, but I think it's worth it to whittle down uh, those guys. And then, of course, all these planes will move. And by the way, uh, Japan now has long-range aircraft, so they'll all have three uh, left remaining in their fuel tank after they move in. So let me move all that to the battle board, and then I'll be back. So you know what? After looking at it, I decided to take that Marine in, too. I've got an SNLF Marine that I wanted to save for Philippines or Hong Kong or Singapore. But... Uh, I really want to take five units in. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, we've got a Japanese infantry and a Japanese Marine, both attacking at two, or both attacking at one in a mountain. Both miss. Regular mountain infantry attacking at two, miss. Mountain Guard Infantry attacking at three. Ah, there's a hit. Okay. So now we've got four fighters attacking at six or less. Oh my gosh. All misses. And now we've got three tacticals attacking seven or less. Target select one to three. One target selected hit. Operation Red Sunset not off to a good start. So 
Communists will choose one of their militia as their normal hit. And then the tactical will target select one of the mountains. This could be brutal. So two militia attacking back at two or less. Nothing. Three regular infantry attacking back at four or less. One hit. Three mountain infantry attacking back at five or less. I gotta re-roll this one because it was on its side and that's two more hits. Oh my gosh. Wow. Four hits. Which means anti-aircraft is gone, marine is gone, regular infantry is gone, regular mountain infantry is gone. Japan just lost four units, only took out two Chinese communist units. So, that leaves the Chinese communists with two mountains, three regular infantry, and a militia. So before we decide, which I, I don't even think it's going to be close, but let's take a look at what we've got coming in behind. So we've got two mountains, an artillery, and an infantry that can all move into here. But we've only got one militia that we can put here. And that's not going to change. Um, so... Yeah, I think we call it off. Um, I think Chinese communists are likely to get one to two more hits, which is going to mean you're going to have to lose a plane. Um, wow. Did not expect that to go that way. Those Japanese fighters rolled terrible. And conversely, the Japanese mountain infantry all rolled exceptional. So that's what happens in these games, though, folks. Never know what the dice are going to do to you. Like that. The guard infantry, or the guard mountain infantry, will retreat back to here, like that. And I gotta think about what to do with those planes because um, I don't have to make that decision until after um, I see the results of the other combat. So those guys have three left in their fuel tank, so let me note that. Let me grab a fuel gauge marker here. Okay, now what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and move all these guys to the battle board. Move that target marker. And we're going to have two transports that go one, two, Scoop up SNLF and the two infantry there, like that. Oh, you know what? I'm a big dummy. I forgot to bring this motorized. I was actually going to take him into that battle, uh, but it's too late for that now. So now I'll just send him. Um, I need that guy to go in there, and I need this guy to go in there too. Uh, and all this uh, Navy is going to move down there and hopefully take out as many of those KMT as I can before they get a shoot. So let me move all that to the battle board and I'll be back. So what it looks like here is uh, two infantry and an SNLF Marine, both amphibiously assaulting, um, a motorized and a normal infantry uh, just doing a normal land attack versus an artillery and a uh, 
free infantry for the KMT. Now, the but the Japanese get to do shore bombardment first. But let me check about that first strike. Okay, shore bombardment is before land combat. So we're going to have three battleships shore bombard at four or less. One hit. Then we're going to have a battle cruiser at three or less. Miss. We're going to have four cruisers at, where's the rest of my dice? Oh, here they are. Four cruisers at two or less. Nothing. And then we're going to have four destroyers and a light cruiser all at one. One hit. So, would you lose the first strike? Or would you lose... I think you'd lose... Because, yeah, because they're done with, I think you'd lose this one and one of these. Giving those two guys a chance to inflict maximum casualties. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four infantry at one. Oh, look at that. Not too shabby. And now we've got two... KMT defending at four. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need to learn how this works on a division of forces. Okay, so the rule is that um, if you're simultaneously attacking by sea and land, then all amphibiously assaulting units have to be chosen first. They got two hits, and with double casualties, I have to lose the SNLF Marine and these two. Infantry. So I took it, but at great cost. And man, did the Chinese roll well that turn. Wow. Um, so, the good news for Japan, though, is that they take this. And that puts them up two more. To 30. And the Chinese communists move down from 5 to 3. On the chart so wow what a turn right um, not sure what that will lead the Chinese to do but uh, let's go ahead and move into non-combat movement now um, so sorry for having a hard time finding a place to put my tripod um, these planes can move three so, I think I want to move them back to Korea, because that's an air base. Um, and, yeah, let's do that. I just realized I have one, too few, I should have three tacticals, and I've only got one chip under there. Do that. And an air base now, they can move six from an air base. So that gives them a lot more flexibility. Um, we'll definitely move these three mountains into here to protect this territory. Like that. Um, I'm going to build a militia here. I'm going to build three mechs here. So I wonder if I don't want to rail move... Um, what if we did this? This territory is key. So what if we did this? Move this artillery in here and then I'll rail move this guy to there. Or I could have picked him up on a transport and moved him down there too. Um, so let's do it that way. And then I won't have any other non-combat moves this turn. 
So, that's right. Yep. Okay, let's place units. Um, let's go ahead and do the four militia first. Um, one militia will go up here. And then one will go here. I've now got four militia in that territory, which is good. I'll put another one here, which is my third in that territory, which is good, because those are those give me bonuses when I'm at war. And then I will put the final militia in here. Like that. Okay, so that's my militia. And then I've got my three mechs, which I just picked up. Which I will put right here in Jehol. And then, last but not least, my SNLF Marine, which, man, I didn't want to use that SNLF Marine in Japan to assault China. I was really saving him for the push south. So not only did I have to lose, use him, but I lost him. So I'll put him right there. All right. That was a pretty bloody turn, all things considered. Um, so let's check here. Put units on the map. I had no lend lease. I had, now I collect income, and victory conditions probably didn't change. But the good news for Japan is they get... $30 to spend next turn. And you know what? They really, <laughs> they might get sucked into this quadmire again. Uh, depends on what happens. Um, they probably, you know, that was a little bit fluky, I'll have to say. I mean, I think they were a little done hard over here. Um, but the KMT aren't going to be able to do much. I mean, KMT have two bucks uh, income. Uh, let's see, how much do each side actually have to spend? KMT has none to spend, remember, because they overspent. And the Chinese communists have $5. So, I mean, still looking good for the Japanese, but um, that turn could have gone a lot better for them, I think. What do you guys think? Let me know. This is, this is China thing's really fun, actually. And uh, Rank Carcass, thank you for making those rules on the, the Chinese communists and how uh, the war, they get more of the warlords because it really makes it a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Admiral Seabass signing off.